let me start this video by first saying, peace be with you all. Now, let's talk about this. What religion was so-called Jesus, a.k.a. Yeshua? I had this conversation with somebody, and they told me that the Jesus of 2,000 years ago, a.k.a. Yeshua, was a Christian. Yeah, I got my Christian chilling with me right now. Okay, but anyway, I offered them fifty dollars to show me where Jesus, aka Yeshua, claimed that he was a Christian in the Bible. If they could show it to me, I was gonna give it to them. Well, of course, they'll never find it because it's not there. I'm not gonna even make a bet with a person unless I know for a fact I'm gonna win. That I've already done the research thoroughly. So I'm not going to make a bet. And I know I ain't going to win. Anyway, let's look at just to, you know, going to kill the idea that Jesus could possibly be a Christian. Let's look at the foundation of what makes a person a Christian. In order to be a Christian, you have to believe that Yeshua died for your sins. Meanwhile, the same Yeshua says that you shall reap what you shall sow. Meaning that technically he didn't die for your sins. In other words, the Bible contradicting itself. Now let's look at it. This is what means that Yeshua, aka Jesus of 2,000 years ago, died for his own sins. Which makes no sense. Okay? Died for his own sins? Or either somebody died for his sins, which means that it would be, have been him in another incarnation to die for his own sins? Prior to the incarnation of him 2,000 years ago? So we can already rule that shit out. So it's some bullshit. So we know that the Jesus of 2,000 years ago was not a Christian when we look at it in that aspect. Now let's look at how Christianity was established. Let's see, does it lines up to the likings of a Jesus of 2,000 years ago or Yeshua? Christianity was established by murder. By a bunch of Caucasians going around enforcing their beliefs on other people. Christianity was made up after so called Jesus passed away. It was made up after he passed away. As a matter of fact, all other world religions, major religions, were made up after the prophets passed away. So technically, not one of the prophets had a religion. You can't find it nowhere in the Bible. Not one of the prophets had a religion. I don't care where you go in the Bible. You will not find it. Nowhere. You just ain't going to find it. It ain't in there. Now, I want y'all to think about this, right? All of the prophets in the Bible, every last one of them, they believe in the God of Abraham. Now, if you, if you go to the book of Genesis, um, when Abraham is introduced to these three men, two of these men are considered angels. Because remember, these two men, they go into Sodom. And the third one that stays behind is considered the Lord or the God of all the prophets. Now, in the beginning, when Abraham meets these three men, Abraham bows his face to the dirt, puts his whole head on the ground. And bows to them. Then he. And in in, it also says in that verse. In the uh, beginning of that. That introduction of these three men. It goes on to say that the sun was at its highest peak. At its highest peak. That means it was hot as hell. And Abraham told them to rest themselves under the tree. Under a tree. He told the Lord to rest himself under a tree. While he go fetch him. Fetch him some water. So that he may wash his feet. And Abraham, according to the scripture, washed God's feet. So this means that God got tired because the son was whooping his ass. Basically, that's what it's saying when you use common sense. And his feet was dirty. So Abraham was rubbing another man's feet. Okay, it's just what it says. A scrubbing, basically. Because it says he washed his feet. Then it says that Sarah went and got ready some a calf. She got milk. He ate the food, ate physical food. If he ate physical food, that means he got to take a physical shit. Because what goes in must come out. So, not just looking at 
those common sense, common sense basis, we see that this is a man. That all of the prophets are following a human being. Unless you want to say extraterrestrial. But we, we're, we're looking at a man. Okay? Now, not only that. Remember. Abraham became a friend of God. Okay? Let's go into the scripture. Now remember, according to the book of Exodus, it says that the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. A man of war. That's what it says. Then it says in the book of Matthew, this is what it says. It says that the Son of Man shall sit as the judge. The Son of Man. Not son of a spook or a spirit, but the son of a man shall sit as the judge. In the Holy Quran, it says that Allah shall sit as the judge. So the son of a man, a human being, whether you want to regard him as an extraterrestrial or what, but a physical man is considered Allah. When you tie the Bible and the Quran together, Allah is a human being or a man. Okay? So now that we got to establish that all of the prophets... Pay homage to a man, a supreme man, a superior man, meaning that this man didn't have junk DNA. That 98% of DNA that we call junk, or our, the scientists of today call junk, that is dormant, that is not being used. Technically, we would have to ascribe or credit that this God has unlocked all of this so-called junk DNA, that 98% DNA. And also, we would have to accredit that this God has unlocked all 12 DNA strands, whereas the majority of us only use two or maybe three DNA strands. So this would give him superior abilities, supreme and ring over all. Now, let us keep it pushing. What religion, if any, was Yeshua, so-called Jesus, of 2,000 years ago. What could he have been? Well let's look. If he followed the, if he followed the God of Abraham. This means that they were all in one structure. Accord. Of accord right? So whatever Yeshua of 2,000 years ago was. This could only mean that Isaiah was that. Amos was that. Um, Habakkuk was that. Jeremiah was that. Um, all of them. Malachi, Elijah, Enoch, it means that every prophet in the Bible had the exact same faith or belief structure. Okay? Because technically they didn't have a religion. Because not one of them claimed a religion. Okay? So technically they had the exact same spiritual system or structure. Now let's look at what it is. Every last one of these prophets, I don't care which one that you go to, they are all paving the way prophesying that the son of man shall come in the last days to crush the wicked and save a lost sheep of people. He's coming to save his people. He ain't worried about nobody else. Okay. He's coming to cause retribution to the wicked that has caused all types of hell for his people in the earth itself. Okay. He's coming to destroy the rebellious devil. A two-legged beast. All of them follow this God and they've always been paving the way. In other words, they've been introducing. Basically, they've been saying, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you such and such. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce such and such. Whether it's Isaiah, Amos, Habakkuk, whoever, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. They're all giving this introduction for the Son of Man because they're prophets and they're prophesizing. He's coming in the last day of the judgment or final judgment. Now, Let's see what these prophets was, if they were anything close of a simmer of a religion. Now, let's look at it for what it really is. Every last one of the prophets in the Bible gave up their will to do the will of the God of Abraham or their God. They gave up their own free will. This means that they were in entire submission or surrender to do the will of somebody other than them. Or rather, their God. They gave up their free will to a man. A man. Remember now, the God of Abraham is a man. But supposedly, a superior man. Far more knowledgeable and wisdom than any other being. So, let's look at it. What was Jesus? 
Remember, Jesus said, not my will be done, but thy will. Insinuating that he was giving up his will to do the will of God or the God of Abraham. The book of Matthew. Jesus clarifies that he follows the God of Abraham. There's also a part that says that, according to Jesus, Father, remove this bitter cup, not my will, but thy will. So, in other words, Jesus was a Muslim because the word Muslim means one who surrenders their will to do the will of God. Not only was Jesus a Muslim, according to his formation in the way he displayed his actions as far as giving up his own personal free will to do the will of another man, a.k.a. this God, because like I said, the God of Abraham is a man. He ate food, he sat down, he sits on his throne, his arm is not so short where it cannot save, according to the book of Jeremiah. Remember, God shall sit on his throne. You can't sit on the throne unless you got ass to sit on with. Okay, so he gave up his free will to do the will of his God. So, technically, if you were to accredit any religion to the prophets, including Yeshua ben Pandora, or the historical Jesus figure, you would have to say that they were Muslim, okay? And they all came in the form of peace. And the word salam means peace. This is where you get the word salam alinkum from, or salam, or Jerusalem. Jerusalem meaning founded in peace. So, salam. Peace. So technically, they were all Muslims before it was stylized with five day, five uh, prayers a day and performing all this other stuff. And if you notice, even Abraham was performing salat. They bowed their heads on the ground. All of the prophets, for some reason, bowed their heads to the ground, just like the people in the Islamic tradition or faith. Also, when Jesus, 2,000 years ago, greeted people, according to the Bible, he said, peace be with you. A peace be upon you. So if you was to translate that language or that saying into Aramaic or Hebrew, the language in which he spoke of the time, at the time that is, it would be Isalam Alinkum. So technically, just based off that, Jesus greeted people with the Islamic greeting, Asalam Alinkum. Peace be unto you, a peace be to you. So just based off of that, if I had to give any religion to the prophets it would be Islam it would be they were all Muslim how many of you are willing to give up your free will to do the will of a man that Abraham claims is God how many of you are willing to give up your own free will hell you do it every day you go to work you're giving up free will because you're doing the will of somebody else so how many of you are really true followers of Jesus because if you're a real follower of Jesus or the, or the prophets in the Bible, you will be giving up your will to do the will of a man or this God fella that Abraham became friends with. Anyway, I hope y'all learned something from this video. Until the next time, may the God of Abraham be with y'all. Salam. Alikum. <laughs> Peace. And may the force be with you.